You want to make a sorbet with some delicious fruit like this raspberry, but you'd have no idea of how much sugar there is inside your fruit. This is a refractometer and it can be very helpful in your lab to find out how much sugar there is in your fruit, in your mixes, but you have to be very careful and know how to use it. Otherwise you can make big mistakes. So let's have a look at how it works and how you can use it in your lab. I'm Luca Musolesi from Gelato Expert and in this video I'm going to show you what are refractometers, how to use them and how useful they can be in your lab for measuring sugars in fruit, sugar syrups and other ingredients that you might use for your gelato or your sorbet. These are both refractometers. This is an analog one, a traditional one and this is a digital one and they can be both used to measure sugars, but how do they really work? Refractometers really measured the refractive index of a liquid, which is basically how much the light is deviated passing through such liquid. We know from experiments in physics that the refractive index depends on what is dissolved in water, if we take water as an example. And this means that we can relate the refractive index to a specific substance dissolved in water. The more we have of that substance, the more the refractive index changes. We can translate this in basically the percentage of this substance. And this substance can be, for example, sugar. And anything else that dissolves in water has an effect on the refractive index. So this means that if we have sugar dissolved in water, it will have a specific refractive index depending on the percentage of sugar that there is. The same is valid for um, salt, for example, or for fructose, or for dextrose, for anything basically that dissolves in water. The refractive index of water varies varying the percentage of what is dissolved in it but in reality it varies also on the number of molecules that are dissolved in it, which basically means that changing the product that we are dissolving in water will have a different refractive index. In simple words, if we dissolve 20% of sucrose in water, we will measure a certain refractive index, but if we dissolve 20% of fructose or dextrose in water, will have a different refractive index. This means that we can calibrate one of these instruments to measure the sucrose that is present in water, so we will have a correspondence between the refractive index and the percentage of sugar in water. This is what is called normally Briggs scale. So with this little instrument, calibrated for sucrose, we can measure how much sucrose is dissolved in water. However, if we have fructose or dextrose dissolved in water, we need to recalibrate our instrument according to fructose or dextrose. So we need a refractometer calibrated specifically for that. And this is one of the first mistakes that we make in a lab because we approximate all the sugars to the same type of sugar. Definitely the most useful refractometer in a gelato lab is the one for sucrose. One more thing to take into consideration is that the refractive index of water changes by changing the temperature. So if we have a very simple refractometer, we have to make sure that the temperature at which the liquid we are measuring is at is always the same and generally it must be at 20 degrees Celsius. If we have a more advanced analog refractometer or a digital refractometer, they can compensate for the different temperature by measuring also the temperature of the liquid. So what can we measure with a refractometer? But in first place, we can measure the amount of sugar in a sugar syrup. But then it's very useful to measure the content of sugar in fruit. Why? Because fruit is basically water with some carbohydrates. Many of these carbohydrates are either sucrose, fructose or dextrose. Obviously, remember, we are making an approximation. If we use a sucrose refractometer to measure fruit juices, we are not taking into consideration the possible variation of fructose and dextrose present in the fruit, but we can still have a decent approximation of what is the total sugar content. What we cannot measure is milk, for example, as we will see in a moment, because milk contains also proteins and fat that scatters the light and make the measurement very difficult. So to measure 
the refractive index of milk, we should remove fat and proteins and then only measure what is left, uh, the lactose and the water. So, to see how to use a refractometer, here we have uh, a distilled water, then we have uh, a sucrose solution, we have a dextrose solution, we have uh, strawberry puree, some raspberries, and finally also milk. Now, distilled water is used to calibrate the refractometers and also to clean them every time, which is very important. Also remember to use every time a new uh, lab pipette if you want to test different things. So we will test every product both with the optical refractometer and with the digital refractometer. I suggest to use even a small compact like this refractometer but digital because it's much easier to use and quicker in the lab. Now let's take our refractometer and let's first clean it up with some distilled water. Then we can dry it. And we can position a drop of distilled water on the glass part, just a few drops, and then close. At this point, we can check if the ringing is at zero. If it's not zero, there is a calibration screw that we can change. Now it's zero and this is distilled water, so we can remove the water and start with our test. So let's first take our sucrose solution. Just a few drops on the glass and we can close. Then we can observe and the reading is 17. Now I can do the same reading also with our digital refractometer. So I will turn this on and test after I clean it, of course. Okay, the digital refractometer gives me 16.5, so close enough. Now I can clean both of them with wiping what it was there and then clean with distilled water. Always remember to clean with distilled water. Otherwise, your previous uh, measurement can affect the following one. Now I can test the second one, which is a dextrose solution. Just a few drops on my refractometer. Close it. Now the reading is 16%. Now I can measure the same in my digital refractometer. Just drop here measure and now I get 15.5%. Now remember that this is sucrose and this is dextrose but I know because I put it that I put the same amount of sucrose and of dextrose so the percentage of uh, sucrose and the percentage of dextrose is the same but I get a slightly different result because uh, dextrose and sucrose affect differently the refractive index. We can add plus or minus 1% to be within the error of the different sugars that are present in fruit. Now let's try strawberry. Let's put a few drops of strawberry. So let's see what reading I can get from the digital refractometer. So from here I can read around 9% of bricks, so it means around 9% of sugars, and from the digital refractometer I can read 8.5%, so we are very close. Obviously the digital one is more precise, especially because it takes into account also the temperature. Now we know that in strawberry there is not only sucrose, so we know that this is an approximation, and we can say that the value of sugars in our strawberries is 8.5 plus minus 1%. So it's between 7.5% and 9.5%. For gelato purposes, the reading that we have is close enough to be used for our purposes. Now, what happens when we have raspberries or some fruit that is a whole piece of fruit? Before we test it, we have to smash it. I can smash my fruit as much as possible 
so that I can get a puree or I can get some sort of juice that I can measure. The more you mix the fruit, the more you smash the fruit, the better it is, so you have a more average reading. Now I can take some of my juice or smashed fruit, some drops, and I place it again on my refractometer. 9.5%. So let's see if I can take a reading also with the digital one. I get 8.5 from this, so just slightly lower, but we are close enough. Okay, now we clean again, and then finally we try also the milk to see what happens with milk. Let's see what happens if I put some drops of milk. Basically, what happens is that I don't see a clear separation line, but I see going from white to blue in a big shade between uh, 10 and 15%. So I don't get any clear reading. And we can try the same also with our digital one. And what happens is that I get 13%, which is clearly not the content of sugar of my uh, milk. What I get is uh, too much scatter of light and, not, and it's not possible to measure a precise refraction index. So with milk, it's very difficult to measure something with a refractometer. Then I could relate the reading that I have with a refractometer to some parameter of milk, but I have to recalibrate my scale specifically to what I'm measuring. Now we have seen how to use these little devices and I really suggest to have one in your lab, especially a digital one, and also when not to use them, for example with milk, or if we are making preparations that have many things that scatter lights. However, if we are making sorbets or we are measuring fruit sugars, they can give us at least a good approximation or what is the sugar content inside our product. If you want to learn more about this and all things related to gelato, check out the Gelato Expert Academy, link in the description. And if you like more videos like this, comment and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.